Boom, what's going on my people? So I'm back with a banger today. I'm down in Bournemouth. I've come to see my guy BH Bullies, yeah? So make sure you guys run up BH Bullies Instagram right now. We'll put it here. So we're here. We're going to come to check out a stunt right now called Wire Trap. You already know the wire hair ting's going mad right now. He's pushing the wire hair ting. I think it's him and Big League Exotics in America that's connected with his dog. But yeah, man, I saw the dog on the Instagram live and it was looking lit. Everybody run up my Instagram, Central Kingdom, and make sure you run up the big mentor, Don Frenchy's Instagram as well. He's just got a new stud in town and we got a next video going to collect that one. So be patient. Me and Don, we got too much footage coming out anyway. So yeah, big up BH Bullies. Make sure you follow him follow up my boy Don Frenchies as well make sure you follow him because the movement's different now and follow up my Instagram as well Central Kingdom let's get into this we're down in Bournemouth BH Bullies vlog let's go So I'm here with my guy BH Bullies right now. He's gonna give you like a little introduction about him and then we're gonna get straight into the wirehead gene, yeah? Let's go. Yes, yes, people, BH Bullies here with Central Kingdom. Come all the way down to Bournemouth to see us. You know, just wanna have a little chat about how I got into the dog game. When I first started in the dog game, my missus, she had a lot of strokes at the age of 30. You know, she wasn't able to work. We had four French Bulldog as pets, two females and two males. And because my missus couldn't work, you know, we started breeding the French Bulldogs, started having litters because it kept her mind occupied through the strokes and, you know, when she couldn't get out of bed and stuff like that. So, you know, the whole reason why I set up BH Bullies was literally to do with my missus not being able to go back to work. So I used to be a painter and decorator since the age of 16. I'm now 30, you know, I'd give all that up for my missus while she was paralyzed down one side of her Body. When she had become better, the only thing she could do is obviously the breeding side of things because she couldn't go back to work. The dogs is really what kept her. Mind you, you know, my missus couldn't talk for four months. She, you know, she went mute, paralyzed down one side of her body, you know, so really it was the dogs that kept her going, you know what I'm saying? And and if it wasn't for the dogs, I don't well, yeah, 100%. You know, they use dogs as therapy dogs. So after all the strokes and she had become sort of back to normal, but she still has episodes, you know, I gave everything up and I put all my money into the dog breeding side of things. You know, I, I come into the dog breeding heavily around lockdown time, you know, is when I first started buying the dogs heavily. I, I already done a few litters before yeah. lockdown. What your investment game on that? Yeah, that, long, you, long. you know what it is? A lot of boys, you know, like the dog father Brum, KKS, yeah. Tony Hill, Diego, you know, designer balls. All them type of people, you know, they made big money in lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because at yeah. the end of the day, in lockdown, you were selling litters before they were even born. But I'll be honest with you, I never made one penny in the whole of lockdown. I've made all my money in the dog game. Once it's cut off. Uh, yeah, 100%. 100%. You know, when, when I come in and I started working with designer balls and I started going down the Koi and Husky route, you know, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, yeah. that's when I really started getting put on the maps yeah, yeah. in the dog game, you know what I mean? And this was all after lockdown. And I made the most money in the dog game since lockdown has been over, which I know a lot of people are struggling. I think a lot of people were making it while lockdown was happening, while everyone was moving scatting. But you didn't even do, you weren't doing no, it uh, then. After, when it when it started to get a bit more harder, that's when yeah, you started to really 100%. come out. You know, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I only really had my clinic. I had yeah. my clinic at, towards the end of lockdown. I had my clinic because there was a lot of break-ins at houses and stuff like that. You know, we've got expensive dogs. You know, I was buying pocket bullies, 10, 15, 20 grand. Pocket bullies, what are they going for now on the market? Two and a half grand. You, I bought all these high-end DNA dogs and all these, you know, pocket bullies and XL bullies all through lockdown. Now you can't even sell a pocket bully. You can't sell an XL bully. You spent a lot of money and it's, and it's all wasted. But, you know, that's basically really just, you know, a, a small sort of part of the story of how I got into the dog game, you know, without boring you guys too much yeah. and going into too much detail. People to get a proper insight is good so they know that obviously everyone has an assumption that, yeah, everyone just got into it because they saw a pound note in lockdown or saw this and that. Obviously, there's pound notes involved or there would be no point yeah. because, I'll, as you said, you needed to get an income at the same time. Yeah, of course, of course. Missus. You know, what it was, to be honest with you, you know, my missus worked with sexually abused kids for probably about 15 years in-house. She was a manager. 
So obviously, like I said, we did buy the French Bulldogs for therapy dogs for the kids at, at, the, at the children's home. Yes, yes, that she, yes, you know, because yes, yes, they, yeah, 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 they lived in house. To be honest with you, I didn't have friends that were breeders. So realistically, when I opened up and started breeding down down here, yeah, there was a few people that I knew that bred, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't nothing to do with them, you know? And when I started breeding, I opened up my clinics. You know, I've opened up clinics in, in Halifax and North Wales. So you've, got, you've turned it into a franchise now? Kind of, yeah, I've turned it into a franchise where, where I could put it, you know, but obviously the one in Halifax I own with my partners, the Frenchie 50-50. Yeah, yeah. The one in North Wales that I own with UTA Kennels, you know, I own 50-50 with him. This shop here that we're in now, the Groomers, my fertility clinic two doors down, you know, I own these fully outright yeah, myself. Yeah. To be honest, I, I am one of the biggest breeders, you know, within the South area. Anyone down in Dorset, yeah, down so south, Put it on the map. Bro, over the... I'll be 100. For the French Bulldogs, I, I am one of the biggest down here in the, in the south, within Dorset, in that there isn't no one doing it like we're doing it. But not just me, because it's not just me on my own working, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my partner's up in Brum, KKS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my partner's in North Wales. as well, man. You know, my partner's in North Wales, UTA Kennels, Same. and my partner's up in Halifax, the Frenchies. So, you know, really, we can't do this without our team members around us, you know? A lot of people like to take the fame and they're out there, they're producing dogs, they don't want to get, bring their partners in and give them, the, yeah, the, the clout that they're, they're, they're kind of deserved, you know? But I couldn't do it without my partners. I do a lot of co-owned dogs. So, you know, without my co-owned partners, there wouldn't be no BH bullies, you know? Without my loyal customers, there wouldn't be, no, of yeah. course not, bro. You know, even with you, you know, like, like, like Central Kingdom, bro, you coming down here today, so, you know, have a look at Wiretap, you know, come down and do a few little videos. You didn't need to do that. You know, we appreciate that. And, you know, without without you, people in the dog game can't see the insights of what a lot of breeders around the UK are doing. Because there isn't, there isn't no one doing it like you're doing it, bro. You know, you know what I'm saying? And that's facts, you know. And, and anyone that wants the YouTube channels and that, make sure you hit up Central Kingdom, bro, because he's the only man doing it this way. Real talk of it all is, within the dog game right now, without my partners, without, without my clients, and all the people that have stuck by me since day one. You think you you went you, when you went into the investment, you was in the deep end now. So you know, you've got the hate, what every every. Of course, of course, of course. You you got to remember this this lad that no one knew come out of nowhere, and he's dropping some of the first in the world high DNA dogs. Money in this game, if you haven't got money, yeah. you're not going to get nowhere. That's yeah. just facts, you know. Because yeah. at the end of the day, for me to go and start using Diego studs, it was fifty grand and split of the litter. And that, and that bag. It's that, that, that's the, the ticket. Lift. That's the ticket. You think, you know, at the end of the day, for me, if I wanted to do the coins and the huskies first, I had to pay that 50 bags. Yeah, and split my litter. I had to give half my litter away and the 50 bags. Was, was, was it worth it? Um, 100% it was worth it, otherwise I wouldn't be where I am now. Yeah, Coins and huskies put me on the map. But a lot of people are scared to pay the ticket because they're worried about getting it back. Do you, do you know what it is? A lot of people are worried about paying the ticket because they're not sure if they're going to make their money back or because they don't want to put the work in. Two, a lot of people haven't got the money to be able to drop the ticket. They can't drop the bag on a lot of things. So, you know, that's why the market is starting to go the way it is because people don't want to drop the bag on these dogs. And these dogs are worth a lot more money than what people are paying for them or what people are advertising them for. You, you know what I mean? This is why, like, with the lives and stuff that we're doing now, is to educate people. So I feel like where people are uneducated, and I say, not saying people like names or anything, but where no, no, people aren't educating people enough, how do you expect them to come and drop, let's <clears> say, 50 bags on something that's anonymous? You, so what the problem is now, is you've got too many opinions. Yeah, yeah. There's too many people on the market mm -hmm. or too many new breeders that have invested into dogs that they don't know about the DNA. They don't understand the breed. They don't understand the DNA of the dog. So a lot of people are given the wrong information out about the DNA that is on the market. Yeah, yeah. For an example, like the C2, you know, we're not going to say no names, but there was a big uproar between a lot of people when me and KKS brought the C2 to the UK. Because obviously when you test the C2 on the colour panel, yeah. It only tests for C2. It doesn't test for different variants. So it doesn't test for C1? It do, no, it tests for C1 and it tests for C2, but it doesn't test for the different variants, like the variant that comes from the Sharpe, the variant that comes from the Poodle, the variants that come from the English Bulldogs, because there is different variants in different breeds. Do they react differently? They all react differently. So that's why there was a big uproar with people saying their dogs had C2 and they could make puffies. No, if you have not got the Bear Coat Sharp A C2 variant, you will not make a puffy. But if you do have C2 in your camp and it is a different variant, you will still so where, make where different you coats. The you can't. There's no so you, you variant. Know where your dog's coming you from. need to know your knowledge yeah. and you need to know the background so is and the lines to of your dog. For, to say if it is. A C2 um, Sharpe variant. The, is there a certain thing? No, you can't look? tell the difference. The only way you can tell the difference in, in, in a C2 is if you put a, a full fluffy carrying C2 next to a puffy. 
So that's two copies of Fluffy and one copy of C2. Someone's gonna say, oh, but that's the same DNA as that dog. Yeah, it is. But it, that dog carries a different variant of C2 to that dog. That's why that dog's not a puffy and that dog is a puffy because their variants of C2 are completely different. But what you should do, if you want to create a puffy, make sure you do your research on the C2 that you're using because you will get caught out from using other people's dogs with C2 and you will not create what you want and you'll be disappointed at the end. So really, it boils down to doing your homework. What I think of as well, as we wrap that, we're going to do a live, definitely. Don, I know you're watching this, so Don, we're going to <laughs> do. wrap this one up in live about the C2 and the variants because it seems like an interesting topic and there was a bit of an uproar. We've done a velvet live, and there was a bit of a knock cool. on that. I mean, I mean, the velvets are still, I mean, they're still going on. That's because it, you answered this stuff. Did you get the answers you wanted? Did I open? <laughs> I mean, that, that, yeah. that page ain't tanked yet because it's yeah, still yeah, open. Yeah, it open book, because no one knows. That's why, if you look last night, I brought Tony Hill on. He knows about the velvets because he's breeding the velvets. Even though Kevin, KKS, is not breeding the velvets, he bred the Sharpies for years. So he knows because it comes from the Sharpies. But hence the reason with the brush coat and the horse coat all come from the Sharpie, yeah? But they're still two different cut types of coats. And we're still in an, in an uproar of what's true and what's not true. You're only going to know from breeding them two dogs yourself yeah, yeah. and doing the research yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's the same with the C2s. When we brought our, our boy, he's not a puffy, but he's a puffy uh, maker, yeah? Yeah, yeah? So when we brought him from the US, we did our research. And that's how we knew when we was buying him from the US and bringing him to the UK, we knew he was the only boy in the whole of the UK that carries the Sharpe variant of C2. That's the only reason why we wanted to bring him back to the UK, but we had done our research first. We didn't just jump into it, buy it, and hope for the best, like a lot of people will do using people's studs. Let's get into the wire, innit, bro? Go on to the wire. The... All right, man. Wire business right now. So give come on, come on. My bro now. Listen, this right tell me what you want to know. Everything. So listen, as you all know, Central Kingdom come down today to check our boy wire tap out. You know, because he is the first ever big rope wired head to ever hit the UK. Just remember what we're saying, the first big rope wire head to ever hit the UK with bone and structure. Yeah, bone and structure. This boy oh, yeah. is back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this this boy, so look, let's take a little bit, of, let's just have a little talk with this boy, yeah, so we yeah. can have a little look, yeah? So this boy, he is a black brindle big rope, wired hair, carrying blue, one copy of brindle, one copy of mast, and one copy of cream. What makes him fascinating is his structure, his big rope, and the wire hair. What people want from this boy is the wire hair, because there isn't a lot of wire hairs. Well, in fact, there is no wire hair in the whole of the UK that has the structure of this boy, and I'll say this now, I will stack this boy up against any wire hair in the UK, any day, any time, any place because I know that you will not have a wire hair on the quality of this boy, you know? Where did he come from? So he come from the um, from the USA, yeah. you know, um, Silver Star in the USA produced him. Yeah. Um, we brought him and partnered up with Big Leagues Exotics. and Big, big them up as well, and, Big Leagues. And Big Leagues Exotics Park out in the US. You know, they gave us the pleasure of being able to co-own this boy and, um, and bring him to the UK. As you can see, this boy's calm. He's got everything. Look, like I said, sometimes you've got to go one step forward, two steps back. He's got the furnishing gene, yeah? He's got the exactly, big rope. The, what's the furnishing? So the furnishing is wire hair. Okay. But, but what is called on the deep, when you test for DNA, it comes up as an F, which is called furnishing. Oh, it's just, just an F. So it's an F. Yeah. So obviously, no one's done two copies of the furnishing gene and two copies of Fluffy within a wire hair Frenchy big rope yet. So we're still, look, obviously this boy doesn't carry Fluffy. There is one more gene. He doesn't carry Fluffy. He doesn't carry Fluffy. And as you can see, his hair, his hair, you can see, is fluffier, is fluffier than, than a full Fluffy with two copies of Fluffy. And he doesn't carry any Fluffy. And what you've got to remember, the, 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 the furnishing gene is a live growing hair. So this fur constantly grows. So we do have to get him groomed every couple of months, but also he doesn't shed. Is he hypoallergenic? Well, this is the thing. At the moment, we're, we're, we are retesting him 
because obviously you know that when they test out in America, their DNA testing labs that they normally use ain't as good as the ones we use. So we're gonna retest him because I'll be honest with you, when he was first tested, he come back no blue. Then we bred him to a few bitches out, out in um, the US and he's had blue puppies. So obviously he carries one copy of blue. You can't create a blue puppy okay, unless you carry at least one copy of blue. So this boy's DNA, he is an AYAT. So, so you are right, I did forget to mention that earlier. So he is classed as black brindle, wide head, big rope, carrying one copy of tan, one copy of blue, one copy of cream, and one copy of mask, and obviously one copy of brindle, as you can see. But look, don't get scared about the brindle because you're replacing the brindle with the structure. So you're putting brindle back into your camp because you've got the structure and you've got the rope and you ain't got a boy like this. So, you know, really when it comes down to the brindle and adding DNA, like I said, that's the going one step forward, two steps back. You're going one step forward with the, with the wire hair, with the new gene, but you're going two steps back with the brindle for the structure. Yeah. And look, he is tired, but you know what I mean? You know, and obviously it, it's hard because no videos or pictures do do these dogs justice, you know? And when you're trying to, you can see he's tired. He don't, he, he's like, you he don't want to stack, do your boy. But you can see this this boy's tiny. He's, he, he's got everything. And he, he is the best wide head big rope uh, that I've ever seen in the world, you know? But we've still got a lot to see, you know? We've still got to see Isabella in tans, Rojo in tans, Blue in tans, black and tans, all in the wired hairs. Then you've still got to see full fluffy wired hairs in all the colors, which is two copies fluffy, one copy wired hair. Then you've still got to see the floodles. Now, the floodles, that's two copies fluffy, one copy wire hair, and one copy of the shush gene. So I'll tell you why, the shush gene, because we're keeping it quiet yeah. and we're shushing all them can haters out. You know what I'm saying, yeah? I'm gonna call this the, the GK gene, yeah? The, the, the gatekeeper gene. The gatekeeper gene, you know what I'm saying? But there's, yeah. there's boys, look, I've got to take my hat off and I want to just give him a shout yeah. out to future Frenchies. Is that, is that, is that? Future Frenchies, you they know. They the pattern, yeah? Well, no. Are they, are they up in Liverpool? So uh, future Frenchies is in Manchester, yeah? Okay, yeah, yeah. So obviously he's a really good lad. He's been working on the wire hairs for about 18 months to two years, you know, and I wouldn't want to ruin it for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. he, he's created one of the best floodles I've ever seen at the moment for the is hair. That, is that the chocolate looking one? That's, the, is, that's actually an Isabella. Oh. It's a full, so that I th if, don't don't quote me on this, yeah. but if I'm right, I'm pretty sure it, it's a fawn Isabella. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a fawn Isabella um, fluidal, and like I said, that is two copies of fluffy, one copy of wide head, which is the furnishing gene, and one copy of the shush gene. The reason why we're calling it the shush gene at the moment is because we can't give you the secret sauce. Because if we give you the secret sauce, you're not going to need us no more. So at the end of the day, bring your bag and we'll give you the shush gene. Hey, That's bring it. Bring your bag, Nadal. Bring your bag. And don't get me wrong, we're still testing this boy to see if he carries the shush gene, yeah? Okay, okay. Because obviously... So have, you had, have you had, like, is there anything that you can, you, that resembles the shush gene? So, see? so... The, does most furniture don't carry it's, the shush gene? Yeah, so obviously, well, I I got, we're saying too much. <laughs> I, could, I, I couldn't, you know, like I said, yeah, it wasn't yeah, me, yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah, me that yeah, found yeah, that out. Yeah, yeah. I've got to take my hat off to future Frenchies. Big him up, you know, he's a good lad, yeah. And he is the one, and I wouldn't ruin it in because he gave me a lot of knowledge on the wire hairs that I didn't know. So for the time being, I will stick by him and loyalty and no one will be knowing what the shush gene is to make the floodles as of yet until future Frenchies, Sam, wants to announce what the shush gene is. Um, and, I will, and I will stick by that with him because at the end of the day, it protects my product, Central. It, it protects my product as well. And we've really got to protect our products at the moment. Look, look, look how calm this boy is. You know what I'm saying, bro? You imagine him put to a female the same, yeah. Bro, his legs. And that's a big phone because I've got big hands. So yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, and, and you can see. Calm, this dog's calm. This dog's been smoking too many reefers is what it is, I think. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's from Jamaica. It's like he's from, bro, it's like he's from Jamaica, I swear, isn't it? <laughs> but no, honestly, like, you know, I would like to go down the, you know, with the DNA of the floodles and that, but that's not really my place because I'll be honest with you, the way I roll and, and, and the way that I stay loyal to people is, is, you know, future Frenchies, 
Um, them boys have got floodles. I don't have a floodle, so I think it's unfair for me to be putting, you know, all the hard work that them boys have done yeah, yeah. When, when it's their when it's their place, you know. If you want to do a video on that? Hit us up, man, and we'll definitely yeah. come and check. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what? It'd be good that we all link up and we get future That's Frenchies and we get more of the boys, and then we can talk more about the wild hairs, you know, because what you got to remember is the wild hairs, the puffies, the floodles, and the visually curly dogs. Yeah, because with the C2, you can make. You can make a visually curly dog with one copy of Fluffy and one copy of C2 just carrying, yeah? And the hair will be visually curly and long. Okay. You add one copy of Fluffy to it, you then get a Puffy. So two Fluffy, one C2 yeah. of so the new variant. Puffy curly. Exactly. Yeah. So the C2 can also make three to four different coats. The wired hairs, the wire hair can make wired hairs. It can make full Fluffy wired hairs. It can make floodles and it can make non hyperallergenic dogs. Yeah, so therefore, that the wired hairs, as we know, can also make four different coats. So now, anyone in the Fluffy game has got somewhere to take their Fluffy program. Because that's what you've got to remember, the Fluffy game become dead. You know, and it's a shame because new shade full Fluffies didn't have their time. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have enough time. They didn't have their time. Yeah, yeah. Because other breeders brought out some new DNA and, and it really ruined it for the new shades. And we didn't get to see, and the new shade full Fluffies didn't get to make their mark in the dog game, personally. I don't know, tell me what you think, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I think with the wide hairs, with the, with the puffies and the C2 and the floodles, that's where it's gonna really be at for anyone that's got a fluffy carrier, anyone that's got a full fluffy, you really need to go and add wire hair or C2 to your program. This is what I'm saying, my people. So we're only bringing you lot exclusive content. I come down personally to see why I tap myself to link up with my brother. It's been nothing but a good link up, as you lot can tell. Everybody like, comment and subscribe and make sure you jump on this new wave, wire wave. Remember Central told you lot here first, wire gang, let's go.